You gotta listen to this one. You gotta listen to this one. Narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger said, May Allah's curse be on the Jews, for they build the places of worship at the grave of their prophets. How ironic. Now let me ask you this. Where's the prophet's grave? In the prophet's mosque. Mosque. Although Ali wasn't a prophet, but where is his grave? Ali's mosque. Mm -hmm. How about big sectarian leader Abu Hanifa? Abu Hanifa's mosque. Do you see the pattern there? And that's how you distinguish the true path from the false claimers of guidance. Sectarians, false claimers of guidance. <laughs> No pressure, I don't want no pressure. So do your thing, make a do my thing. Do your mansion, make. Hmm. Great things, great things, family. Great things. Kindly share, invite, tag, and then uh, let us learn together here. Okay. This is Seto SSK, uh, as usual. Uh, and I really appreciate everyone coming here on this platform, okay? Trying to seek for knowledge, okay? Uh, you humble yourself. You are just as humble as I am, uh, trying to seek for knowledge, uh, not looking at credentials of some people, okay? Somebody with a tie or with a suit or with a certificate. And then you want to you want to seek knowledge from wherever you what um, you can acquire it, okay? Uh, thank you for that. And then... Uh, share the video invite people so that we can all learn something together okay uh, i know the topic or the title of this video is something some people will look at the title and then judge you you say what what, what is wrong with this guy it's the same i say how muslims think about allah and how versus how muslims think about god i know i know please be patient for a while okay so you understand what i mean okay i know god is Allah in Arabic. <laughs> That's what the Muslims say. So don't worry. You understand why I'm saying this, okay? Um, uh, thanks for coming. Kweku A is on the line. Thank you, okay? Uh, Mark Johnson D is also on the line. William Ofori on the line. Thank you. Um, uh, this brother too is on the line. It's Ekboli, Ekbelo. Thank you very much, okay? Hi to the family of truth. To the family of truth. Thank you invite people share okay and call people from youtube facebook whatever tag people and let's learn and you understand what i mean by when muslim is speaking about allah and when muslims are speaking about god okay and this is simple especially when the muslims are speaking about the christians and they, they, they don't say the christians believe in allah they say the christian god they don't say the christians allah you see the Muslims don't say the Christians Allah because the God that the Christians are worshipping, the Muslims don't consider that God to be Allah. So they will tag the Christians, the God that the Christians are worshipping. They, the Muslims, they worship Allah. You see what I mean? So this is a clear um, distinguish, uh, uh, how to distinguish between the Allah from the Muslims and the God from the Christians. So you see? Okay. And then I have come to realize I am going to play a video for you to listen from a sheikh, okay? When the Muslims, uh, the Muslims believe in one God, which is one Allah, okay? And then the Christians also believe in one God, uh, which is not Allah. They don't call their God Allah. Never, okay? But when it comes to uh, believing in one God, how the Muslims understand it, they understand it clearly that one means one and nothing else. Let me just play this video for you. Uh, it is in our local dialect, okay? I will try. I will try and then explain this to you. Uh, Julius Asiedu, thank you. Julius Asiedu is also on the line, okay? Since they are confused. Thank you very much. Julius, please kindly share the video for me on Facebook too. You see... Uh, <clears throat> How the Muslims uh, want, always wants to explain some things for themselves. They don't give the same uh, uh, opportunity for the Christians to do so. They will see something in Quran and they will try to give you an explanation. They will try to... Let's, let, let's just play this video for the meantime and then you will understand what I mean, okay? This Sheikh, you already know him. He's called Sheikh Hafiz Buhari in Ghana. And then this Sheikh is going to say something very um, interesting here. Listen. 
God yes, Quran is in your throne. No. Okay, what he just said is uh, some um <clears throat> he heard he heard on the line or on social media that somebody was saying Allah has a throne. And since Allah has a throne, that was the claim from somebody. He's talking about um Jabani P Black, which is skeptic Jabani on social media. The YouTube page is called Skeptic Japani. Okay, you can check this video. So the Sheikh is trying to tell people, somebody was saying uh, Allah has a throne. And since Allah has a throne, uh, that means he sits on his throne. Or oh, So that was the claim from Skeptic Japani. And then he is saying, so he's saying, no, you cannot say such, such a thing. Yes, because Allah has a throne. You don't know Allah and you cannot imagine how Allah sits on, on his throne. Okay, that is his argument here. Listen carefully. Quran, like I said, Yakupo, it will drone. But then the throne of God is unknown to you and I. The Quran has stated Allah has a throne, and the throne is unknown to you and I. It is unknown. That is his statement. Okay, listen carefully. So the judgment, so so the way he is about to introduce or talk about his God from the Quran is even though the Quran says Allah has a throne. And we know a throne, it's like a chair. Allah doesn't sit on it. It is unknown to you and I. Okay, we are speaking about a throne, which we, it is, they, you see they, they sit on throne. It is it is unknown to you and I, according to him, okay? It is saying, it is saying, Nyame wansa, Nyame sa te saying, Nyako pansi, wole mi yeku le u kufu wan ahad. How is it? How is the throne? You don't know. And then he also gave another example. Allah has hands. How the hands is, you also don't know. So when it comes to uh, describing the Allah or describing Allah, the God that they follow, he has a throne. You don't know. It is it's something you can't imagine. Allah has a hands. You don't know. You see the logic here? So you cannot determine or you cannot even think of how the hands of Allah is. For the Muslim, that is very logical. He's saying this. You see, the Allah is talking to us. And then I know there could be um, um, for symbolism, okay? You use hands, it represents something. But he is able to tell us the hands of Allah, you don't know. Listen. In another verse, Quran chapter 42, Allah will say, Lay circumstantially his shape in. There's nothing that you can picture in your mind. There's nothing that you have seen that looks like God. You see, so even, even though Allah is saying in the Quran that he has hands, the Quran is teaching or he is telling us there is nothing that you can picture that resembles Allah. So whatever picture that you have in your mind, it is not uh, it is not Allah. You don't know Allah. You haven't seen Allah before. You don't know him. Nothing is compared to Allah. Listen carefully. This will bring to the point that I'm trying to make at the end. And you will see the double standard and how hypocrite some Muslims are. The same yardstick they give for themselves, they don't give some for the other religion. <laughs> you see, listen. When we say Allah has a hands, he's using uh, the local uh, local language, okay? He said Onyankopo, but since he's a Muslim, so he's speaking about Allah. So he said, since Allah has a hands, it doesn't mean it is the same as we do. It, is, it doesn't mean that, so Allah has a hand and I have a hand. And he has a hand, but it doesn't mean we have the same hands. And he's giving an example with a, a river. Listen. Half mass. River, our mass. But the mass of a river is not like my mass. He's giving an example. Like they will say a river has a mouth. That means maybe the beginning of the river. A river has a mouth, and then he has a mouth. So it but they are not the same mouth. You see, so river is a, a different thing, and he is a human being, he has a mouth. So since we never know Allah, you don't know Allah, if, even if Allah said he has a mouth, you cannot think that it is the same mouth as yours because the river mouth is not the same as his mouth. That is his logic here. When it comes to Allah having a throne, he's giving you why you cannot even think of Allah's throne. When it comes of Allah having a hand, he's giving you reasons why you cannot even think about it because you don't know Allah. This is the point, okay? But I want to point something out here, very crucial. Listen. So 
<clears throat> so when we say Allah has a hands, Allah has a throne, don't think it is the same as the one you know, the, like yours. Don't think, don't think like that. You don't know Allah. Okay, don't think like that. Say you know me yet, 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 how would you know? How would you know? Um, the way that we, you and I, we sit on our chair, we cannot imagine that that is the same way Allah will also sit on his chair. Because you don't know Allah, how would you know? That is his logic here. Which is, it is okay, I'm not saying it's a bad logic, but how come he can use this logic for Islam, but he don't use this the same logic for the Christians? You don't know. You don't know the way you would imagine or you sit on a chair. So when you hear the throne of Allah, you are imagining Allah also sits on his chair. But you don't know Allah. So how do you know this? Okay. Let's continue. So if Allah has a throne or a, a throne and he sits on his throne, imagine, let's, let's say if Allah has a throne and he sits on a throne, how do you know that he, he lays on the throne with, with his side or he sits on the throne with his ass? How do you know? You don't know. That is his logic. <laughs> okay, you don't know. So you cannot... It assume like the way you sit down that will be the same way Allah sits down on his ass like you do you don't know so if even if Allah had a chair or a, a throne just because you and I we sit on our throne with our asses you are also assuming so you are do as you are assuming that Allah also does the same way that you do, but you don't know Allah. You haven't seen Allah. Allah is saying that this is what He said before. He said before Allah is like nothing compared. You see the logic here. Nothing is compared. In this thing. Wait, it does not make sense. Well, make because Nyaku Ponsi only Bibia answer. It doesn't make sense because Allah is saying He is nothing. He is compared to nothing. He doesn't resemble anything. He is not identical with anything. So everything that you imagine, it is not Allah. Listen, that's what he's going to say next. It's whatever mental picture that you have about God, you know, a false picture, that is not God. So every mental picture you have about God, it is false God. It is false. Every mental picture that you have about God, it is false. Because Allah has a hands, you don't know the hands. So you can imagine, oh, the hands of Allah is like that, it is like this. It, it is false. You don't know. Allah has a throne. You don't know. Every mental picture you have about God, you don't know. That is the statement he made it clear for us. So this same logic, listeners, be, pay attention. <laughs> so now that we know that every how you think about God is a false imagination. Let's listen to that one more. One, one, one more. Picture that you have about God. It's whatever mental picture that you have about God, you know, a false picture. That is not God. And you have to understand this. So it is clear. Every mental picture that you have about God, that is false. You don't know. So this same logic now, when you come to Christianity, they say they have a God who is three in one. So how, you, how, how, how dare you as a Muslim going to tell the Christians they are lost? They can, God cannot be three in one. You see now, he is just saying when it comes to Allah, Allah is one. Okay, Allah is one. But how do you know the oneness? Because you just said the hands of Allah, you don't know because you haven't seen Allah before. You just said the throne of Allah, you don't know. You haven't seen Allah before. And Allah said he is one. And how do you know the oneness of Allah? Because there is something called compound unity. There are some things which can be um, uh, plural at the same time and then at the same time also singular. You see, that is, they say compound unity. It is in Christianity. The Bible said, okay, a man and a woman who leave their parents, they will join together and became and become one flesh. You see that? That is a compound unity. So they are both two persons coming together, but they will become one. That is one thing. They said one, exactly one flesh. So that is compound unity. And now Allah, Allah is saying he is one. How do you know the oneness of Allah? Now the Muslims are trying to tell us when it comes to the oneness of Allah, they know exactly how Allah one is. They know exactly. When it comes to the throne, nobody can imagine every picture that you have in your head. 
it is a false picture. You cannot imagine the hands of Allah. You can't imagine it. The throne of Allah, you cannot imagine it. But the oneness of Allah, it is just one. All of a sudden, they can imagine it. So when it comes to Allah, they know that Allah is one. And one means one. We've attached with nothing. So at this moment, as when it comes to the oneness of Allah, they know exactly how it is. We see now. And then when it comes to the Christians, the Christian, it can be possible. The Christians believe there is only one God. The Bible stated clear there is only one God. But since he himself is saying in this video, Allah is nothing that you know. You cannot compare Allah. Not you, nothing is compared to Allah. So if Allah said he is one, why are you imagining the one that you think or you know is, this, is the one Allah is talking about? Why? You see the logic here? You see why these Muslims now, they are shaking and panicking because you see when you use critical thinking, their own statements goes against them. Whatever they are saying, and then you try to, you, you, you study their, uh, their thinking and you try to um, turn it around and ask them the same questions, they start to panic. <laughs> Somebody is saying there, okay, God said, let us create human in our image and likeness. So it means um, it means um, we look like God and God looks like us. Okay, that's what the brother is saying here. Okay, so when God is, was even saying, let us create him in our image. Listen carefully, even this statement is clear. Let us create in our image. Okay. So he, it wasn't a singular person. It was talking about our. You see, the Bible doesn't use some this logic like um, uh, um, what, what did the Muslims say? The, the Allah is using we, a uh, royal, uh, majest, majestic, ro, majestic we, or something like this. It is a majestic we. The Bible doesn't use that. So when it says our, it means there were multiple things there. So even though God was creating and saying our and God is still one. So now this is what I say. The Bible, the Bible God is more better or it's, it's better. It's logical than the Quran. You see now, now we have, uh, according to his statement, God is something unique that you cannot even comprehend. And then the Bible God is something that it is even bothering people to comprehend because that is God. <laughs> you see that God is something you cannot just understand. So if you understand your God, that is probably uh, something made, man-made because according to his, his, his logic, God is unique. God is something above, beyond imagination. God is a miracle. You see, God is a miracle. So the Christian God is something miraculous and then you can't even, even comprehend. And then he is one at the same time, but many at the same time. And then there is something confusing. And that, that means God, that because your Quran, you are saying Allah is one. Nothing is compared to Allah, but now you understand what one means. I hope people get the point. You see, sometimes you have to repeat yourself. Because the more you repeat it, the more it enters to the, some, into the brain <laughs> of some people. Now, all of a sudden, he can explain who, who, the oneness of God. Before, when it comes to the throne of God, he cannot explain. It is imaginable, unimaginable to you. When it comes to the hands of Allah, it is only you can imagine things. Whatever imaginal, imagination picture you have, it is a false picture. He said, but when Allah is one, all of a sudden he knows exactly what one is. Have you seen Allah before? How do you know the, the unity, the compound unity of Allah? How do you know that? <laughs> you see, I hope. And then, uh, so because of this, how um, I, I am analyzing them and studying them. Have you realized, okay, let me put this one in for the meantime so people will understand. I had a debate with one sheikh from Ghana called Jafar Mohammed. okay? The debate, the agreement was we had to do two debates, first day and second day. And then I, that is why I intentionally recorded him when we were speaking, making the arrangement for the first debate. I have to record this guy because I know that he will come out and lie. So I intentionally recorded the, all the conversation. He was aware that I was recording it. He was aware. So I recorded the conversation. And then in the conversation, which I have already posted the conversation on YouTube already. Okay. 
in the conversation, we made an agreement to do the first debate on a date uh, on Monday, okay, at the time. And then the host and the topic, everything was arranged in that um, conversation. And then um, that was my, my, uh, my topic, okay? So the topic was two topics. I would choose my topic and he would choose his topic. So we did my part of the deal, which I brought my topic and we did it. After we finished the debate, now we have to arrange for the second debate because the first debate was on Monday. And then the second debate, we never, we never said the second debate will be immediately after the after Monday, which will be Tuesday. We never arrange anything like this. Never. And the conversation is there. It's, it's on, on, on social media. So after the first debate, now because um, the debate is done, uh, now we have to arrange for the second debate. And that, that will be his topic. So I brought my topic and we have finished debating my topic. Now it is his opportunity or his time so that we debate his topic. This guy, um, after the debate, after how I embarrassed the whole Islamic community in Ghana and himself. So right after the debate, even though he knew, he knew that I don't have time the next day, which will be Tuesday. He himself arranged or organized a debate without my knowledge. I didn't, I didn't agree to none of what he did. I wasn't at home. I was at work. So the guy organized a debate and then put on a time and, a, and set up a platform. And then he calling me, he's calling me at the time that he said, without my knowledge, we don't have any agreement that we were going to debate on that day, nothing. And now do you know what he's doing? He set up a date and a time on his own. And then he's calling me that, where are you? The, the, the time for debate is up. But we never agreed for anything. And then now he is trying to tell me because I contacted him, I contacted him yesterday. I said, my guy, when are you going to let us fix the dates for our second debate? I am not actually going to run after you, okay? Because everybody saw what, what happened. He is saying, I should come out and apologize. <laughs> I should come out and apologize to him and to the platform he set up. That uh, I didn't know, I did not, um, I did not um, show up for the second debate. We never agreed for anything. Until for wait a minute, okay, I'm coming. I have to do something right now. I Islam the Manipa about my four. Or be about Jim Benny and Oye Money and make come for Timasiano. A moment, my mother. About Jim Mafoy and Cremo Fonqua. Or be a Cremo, no, no, Bajim Benny. I assign a tear, my cat. I don't fear. I am saying this without fear and panic. Or be a criminal or by Jim or by a Bajim Benny, a Bajim Mafon Kinkrim of War, Timmy Pa Namibo Islam, Islam, Salam, Islam, so the Mabajim Mafo to be friend who criminal or Bajim Benny. Sorry for that, okay. I had to sneeze, okay. I had to sneeze. I'm just letting you know what happened. I had to sneeze, so I had to just turn off the camera so that I can sneeze properly, okay. Because sneezing is not something you have to, um kill it in yourself you have to bring it out okay keep keep that in mind uh, so sorry for uh, playing this video it has nothing to do with what we are doing here okay um so this shake is complaining he's now saying i have to come out and apologize you see now so they are panicking because of what uh, the, the way i the way um the guy he was before the debate because the way he was he was um boasting said oh go and fix the date you are running away from me go and fix the date you are running away from me now all of them have seen the strength that i hold all of them and this shake himself too no i'm not sure he will even even um try to debate me anymore because the statements that he makes shake i'm i'm speaking about shake hafiz buhari let me play the video one more time okay so people will hear him well well let me play the video. Uh, that is a short video, one minute video, one, one minute and some seconds, okay? So just listen to him one more time without my interruption and then listen. It is even though it's not in the language maybe you understand, but I already explained it to you. Let's, let's listen to him one more time. And I'm God, yes, Quran is in Yakupo, it will troll. It is, I mean, it will troll, yeah. It's just in Yakupo, it will troll. No! Quran is in Yakupo, it will troll. 
But then the throne of God is unknown to you and I. At the same, at the same, Yami Wansa, Yami Sati Sain, Yaku Pansi, Wolem Yakula Ukufu and Ahad. In another verse, Quran chapter 42, Allah will say, Lay circumstantially his shake in. There's nothing that you can picture in your mind. There's nothing that you have seen that looks like God. They are casting Yakupa Wansa, and just in Sati Sain, Minu Minu and Sa. Memo, Mitia, I know I have mass. River, our mass. But the mass of a river is not like my mass. Eti, Yakasi Yami will answer, Yami will say, Man, just man, man, you are at the and the same Yakupo will call you, and I won't be in Sayami at the Kunya Sua. Send your minimum yet, no Kumas idea to any Atlasano, who names the Yakupo at the Kunya. So, how would you know? Send your mule a Kunyan put us of Atlasa. We are the ones who are obeyed done in Chemu and answer big enough to obey the womb, and the Yakupo Kunya. Minimum yearly, I'd be and say, A Kunyan Yatanas, the Atlas, the Atlas, and those who you are assuming saying Yakupo at the two Abetna Kunya. So, where he does not make sense. Well, because Nyako Ponsi only be be and said, into whatever mental picture that you have about God, a false picture that is not God, and you have to understand this. Excellent. <laughs> whatever mental picture you have about God, you have to. It is not. It is false. It is false. Whatever mental picture. So when you say Allah is one, how do you imagine Allah being one? How how how, how do you imagine that? How come that one day you can imagine? Because there can be something, there is something called compound unity. Allah could be one at the same time with multiple persons in him. I get, for example, the sun is one. There is only one sun that we know, the sun. Okay? The sun is also a star. So we can we, we have one, one sun, but we have many, many, many stars, but the sun is also a star. The sun is also energy. Energy, so we can say, okay, oh, the, the sun is energy. It is the sun, so there's one sun. There's en the sun is also a light for us, a light. But there is only one sun. The sun that is a star, that is an energy, that is a light, is only one sun. So there, it has many um, characteristics, but it's still one sun. And when you come to the Bible, the Christians believe there is one God. And the Bible even makes it clear when you read John chapter 1, clearly, John chapter 1, verse number 1, you can see that the God, there is the Word, and the Word, and there was God, and the Word was also God. So it's, it, it, it distinguished between the Word and God, and then the Word was also God, but there is still one God. You see the logic here? So the, the, the way the Muslims will, will think of God when it comes to Christianity, how is this possible? This Sheikh, in this same video that I'm playing for you in this video, when you watch the whole video, he was complaining. He said, you said, oh. <laughs> and then you were saying Jesus is God. A God who, who eats, who sleeps. Look at this logic. And wh Why can a God not sleep or eat? If the God is a God and he's almighty. That is why I don't get. You see the Muslim as if they don't know what almighty means. If a God is almighty, you see, you see there are certain things you could ask me. I, I, I'm, I'm not a Christian. I'm not saying. It. I am just going according to what the Bible is saying. I am going according to what the Quran is saying. If a God has a title to be almighty, how the God will do certain things? Maybe I cannot explain to you. I am not God. I don't have the knowledge of God. So, but the way the God may, may present himself to you, you cannot decide for the God. You see, you cannot decide for God because if God is all my, if God wants to die, how do you know how God wants to die? He, will, he, he is the one who can show it to you. If God wants to eat, you cannot say because he's God, he cannot eat. But what if he wants to? So you limit yourself if you if you if you are saying you believe in God and then now you want to decide for God what God can do and God cannot do. So who is the God now? <laughs> you see the logic what I'm trying to say. I said it the other day. Just because the king, the ruler of a country, the the president of Ukraine, the you see, just because a king who is the most powerful king decide decide to step from his throne and then come to his community and tell the community hey this community this sunday is a, a, a labor um labor community that's what they say general cleaning general cleaning in the community and then the king himself picks up his broom 
and then leads the country. When Rwanda, you see uh, this 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 president in Rwanda, when they are doing, he did the same thing too. He is cleaning his country with his community. That doesn't make him a lesser president. He decided he he don't have to. He didn't have to, but he decided. So I am going to be the leader and come down with you, and then we all clean the country. That doesn't mean he is a lesser president. That doesn't mean he is not he is not powerful. So if a god decide to do something, you cannot say okay. But how come a god will work on this on this earth? That means he's not God. So you have um, this attitude of um, arrogancy. Um, you, because if you were to be powerful, the way you will behave, you think God should behave the same way. You see the logic? If you were to be powerful and strong, you wouldn't be walking around um, with local people who are not that in your at your level. So you think God should also be arrogant. So somebody who will be boasting or he's, who will show his power Okay, God, you don't decide for God. If you say you believe in God, you don't decide for God. <laughs> Somebody says, this is the can be deep thinking. It, it, it thank you, brother. Thank you. Think about it. That is why I say when they are speaking with their audience, okay, it is easy. It is this shake. When I, I, I see him, I see through him easily. He knows, he knows me. He has, he has tested me before. So every time he's speaking, he wants to speak to his audience. You see, the Muslims, they know that uh, some people have locked their mind. So um, they will not listen to an outsider. Whatever somebody from outside is saying, they will not listen to him. So whenever you are saying something which they know, it could, it could press some people to think deeper. And then they will come out and pretend that what you were saying was some kind of jokes. And then they will be laughing over your things, over the things that you said. But please, please, okay, don't be so, <laughs> don't be so naive. Don't be so naive. Don't be a, a supporter of a religion. Be a reasonable thinker. Be somebody say you want the truth and you stand for the truth. And then what, when they shake him, when I am saying something which is wrong, you can correct me. You can come out and say, I am lying. So what? how come you cannot do the same thing when the shake is doing it? How come you cannot do the same thing? And what I have realized is some people, you see, some people only support you if you follow their agenda. Some people all, only support you if you are in the same, uh, if you agree with them. Some people will only push you if you be... If you only agree with them, that is when they will support you. They are not, um, they don't tolerate other ideas. You see, they don't, they don't. That, as, uh, for example, is Islam. A bit, a good example. Islam doesn't accept another I idea. Whatever Islam is saying, that is what you should obey. This platform, I already said, I am not a Christian. And then, and then I am not a Muslim. I am a researcher. If somebody, for example, Baba Shuib, Baba Shuib can come here. I don't believe in Baba Shuib. I don't believe in Islam. I don't believe in Baba Shuib. But Baba Shuib's message, somebody else may like it. Somebody else may appreciate it. So why should I block Baba Shuib when Baba Shuib is trying to spread his message, which is also making sense in a way, the way Baba Shuib uh, explains the Bible, uh, explains the Quran. You see, it makes you have a different understanding from the Quran which could help some people. So me, I don't agree with Baba Shuib. I don't accept it. I don't say it is true, it is from God. But somebody may understand what Baba Shuib is trying to say. So I will not say, because I don't understand Baba Shuib, I will not let him come here. If Baba Shuib give us the opportunity, he wants to come on, on, on this platform, he's welcome. Because at least when you ask him questions about what he is saying, he is able to give you answers from the book that he is defending. So why would I block Baba Shuib? You see now, and what it's not about me, it is not about me, it is about what other audience are listening. So I don't have to block Baba Shweb, I can let Baba Shweb come. If Sheikh Hafiz Buhari wants to come here and also spread his message, he can also come and spread his message. If I want to spread my message, I can spread my message. If an atheist, a Christian, wants to spread his message, he can spread his message. I don't have to block people who want to spread their message because I don't like it. Just because I don't like it, they, it won't come here. No, that is not that. That's not the purpose. I want people to hear. And then sometimes, okay, 
if you try to hide some things from some people, just because you, because maybe you believe you believe um, Islam is the truth. That is the problem. You believe Islam is true, and and then they are trying to hide Christianity from you so that you will never know about Christianity. There will be a time they cannot hide that from you. So whenever that time comes, they believe that they have in Islam, they will lose it because if Christianity becomes available to everybody, now they will hear what you were trying to hide from them. So that is not a good way. So sometimes you have to leave, you have to let all the news, the messages come out so that everybody will see it and then they will make the judgment for themselves. They will decide for themselves. That is what we are doing here, okay? So this Sheikh, okay, this Sheikh Hafiz Buhari, it is clear. Let me put the telephone number there. You can call in, okay? Because I, I, I don't want to always um, bring in so many information. Sometimes you have to stick on one information and punch there for a long time for people to understand. You can call me. The, tele the telephone lines are open right now. Okay, somebody called before, but we will call him back very soon. I think he was calling for a different purpose. So the Sheikh, the logic here is right now, Allah is one. How do you know the oneness of Allah? How do you know Allah is not the compound unity? Yes, we know Allah is one, but how do you know? They know that in Christianity, they know that God is one too. But how do they know? Because the 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 um because the Jesus, the Bible itself explains it clearly. Jesus, who was uh, the word, and the word was there before creation. That word became flesh. You see now. So in Christianity, that is why they let me let me put it on the screen so people will see. And uh, this verse, people have to ponder on it properly. People have to really ponder on the verse. Okay, John chapter one. Let me put it on the screen so people will see it clearly what I mean. So the reason why people think Jesus is God, it's in the Bible. Okay, and Jesus did many things to prove that he is God. So as you all can see, I hope it's on the screen right now. Okay, yes. Let me let me uh, zoom in or zoom out, whatever fits, and see everything clear. Okay, as you can see, the word became flesh. The word became flesh is the headings of this um, verse. So in the beginning which is in the beginning of creation, before everything began, was the word, okay? This word, it is there. And the word was with God. It was with, when we say something, it's with something. That means they are not the same thing. It was with God, according to the Bible, not according to me, okay? So this word was with God. There are two separate things. The word was with God. And then again, he's letting you know this word was God. You see? So now we have a word which was with God and the word too is God. The word was with God and the word too is God. And the Bible makes it clear that there is only one God. So even though they are not the same persons, you can clearly see that you can clearly see there is the difference between the word and God. And this word itself is also God. So now you have two persons. According to this verse, you have two different persons, but they are both God. And the Bible lets you know that there is only one God. So now, if you, the most Christians believe there is only one God, and they are saying Jesus is God, and then the Father is also God, and you are saying that is impossible. But how do you know your oneness of your God? How do you know that? You see why? So when you read the Bible, according to the Bible, okay, you can clearly see that the word was with God and the word itself was also God. But there is only one God. That is the, mir the miracle of God. That is it, according to the Bible. So even if, you see, if you want to believe in a God, you have to be a God that is even so powerful that it is, it is above your imagination. That is strong. A, a simple God is a man-made God. And then at the when you reach chapter 14, John chapter 1, chapter John chapter 1, verse number 14. Okay. When you reach there, you will see that that word, which was God, you see now, John chapter 14, 1, verse number 14. The word, the word which was there before creation, which was with God, 
okay, that word became flesh. So this word, it existed before come, becoming a flesh. Do you understand? So before that word became flesh, it already existed. And then there was a God with this word, which was also a God. So, and then we know that this flesh, the, the word that became flesh is Jesus. So Jesus did not begin to exist at the time that he became flesh. You see now, that is, it is in the Bible. <laughs> Jesus existed as the word before it became flesh. And God, that is, the, that is the logic here. A God can decide. A God does what he wins, not what you win. So because you are an, an arrogant person, because you see yourself when you are when you become the most powerful person you will not mingle with the ordinary people when you become the most powerful person the most richest person you will not do certain things because you feel like you are too big to do certain things there are some people here right now or listening to me because they live in usa because they live in canada because they live in germany in austria because they have money they are ashamed to take trotro in ghana you see now, they, are, they, they have elevated their standard to a certain level. They think Trotro is beneath them. They, 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 that, is, that is their thinking. But if God wants to take Trotro, who are you to say, no, he cannot take Trotro? And because God is taking Trotro, I hope people will understand that uh, um, a passenger law, uh, uh, you see in, Ghana, in Africa or in Ghana, they will say a passenger um, transport. Passenger, you see that, I don't know how to say this. But people will understand me. They think a God should be riding the most beautiful car. That will prove that he is God. So the word became flesh. Listen. And made his dwelling among us. So the word that was with God at the beginning became flesh and made his dwelling among us. According to the Bible. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one. And only son, listen carefully. So now we have seen that the word is the only son who came from the father. Listen, that is the, it is in the Bible. Who came from the father? Who is the father here? When you read verse number one, it says, and the word was with God. So now you identify that God is the father. It says it right there. Now we know that son is the word and the father is the God that he was talking about. We have two persons here, right? Right. With John chapter one, when you read John, okay, and you are you are you are reading it um, sincere, you are trying to understand the book. You are not just say you are not trying to understand the word of God, but you are understanding the book. At the beginning was the word, and then we know that the word is the Son of God, according to chapter fourteen, and that God <laughs> is the Father. It stated right here, full of grace and truth. Okay, so as you can see, it is a clear statement from the Bible. God is one, according to the Bible. I can prove it to you according from the Bible, okay? In the Bible, when you look at Mark chapter 12, okay, let me put it on the screen too, so you will see that I am not what lying to you guys. So you cannot say Allah has a hands, and the hands of Allah is something you cannot even think of, you cannot imagine, at the same time, now you are trying to tell us when Allah is said he's one. You are trying to tell us how the oneness of Allah. Mark chapter 12, verse number 28. Okay, I am opening it. Let, let's see what it says over there. Uh, in the Old Testament, it says it also there that there is only one God. Okay. From 28 to 29, okay. Mark chapter 12, verse number 29. That is the point. The main point is at verse 29. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You hear that? The Lord is one. So it says the Lord is only one God, one Lord. And at the same time, when you go to John chapter 1, you can see that there was the word which was God and there was God. So it makes you know that, okay, even though there is two persons there, but the God is one. That is why they came up with the word called Trinity.
so that you will know what it means. Trinity means um, the compound unity. The God being in three persons because the Bible is teaching that there is one God and there is another God and there is, an, and there is one person, another person, and another person, but there is still one God. You see? And, the, and this verse, okay, Jesus is answering as a man because what? The word became, a, became you see, the word became flesh and dwell and made his dwelling among us this is also a simple thing that muslims need to understand jesus who was the word which became the flesh humbled himself and took the form of a human flesh so when jesus came as a, even though he is god he humbled himself the bible teaches that everything is according to the bible i am not speaking on my own accord i am not what doing what speaking on my own um uh understand i'm giving you references from the bible okay let me prove it to you so jesus took the flesh of a human being and then he is coming to this planet or to this earth to teach you that there is truly a god which he is but he has humbled himself just like the president or the most powerful king will humble himself and put on his working shoes to go and do a um, general cleaning in his community to show the people the kind of king he is. It doesn't mean he is not a king anymore. Just because the king is cleaning the floor with his community, it doesn't make him a lesser king. So if God decides to come and then he humbled himself, the word humbled himself and then worshiped the father, it is nothing wrong with it. Okay? So this is what the Bible is saying according to Philippians chapter 2, verse number 6, I think. Let's see. Philippians chapter um, 2, verse number 5. In your relationships with one another, listen what he's saying here. The Bible is saying, not I am saying, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ here is the word because we know the word was there before and it made its dwelling among us. And it has this name, Jesus Christ. It also has the name, the son of man. Okay. Who, listen, who being in, in very nature of God. Now, it doesn't say that. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God. Do you hear that? Jesus, in being very nature God, did not consider equality with God. So even though he is God and he has a nature of God, came here as a man and didn't consider himself and didn't boast, I am the most powerful, I am God, so worship me too. Jesus took the nature of a man and didn't consider himself equality with God the Father. So Jesus humbled himself so that he will what? Prove to you, show to you that follow this path, follow me, and then you will be saved at the, at, the, at the judgment day. Did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Now you see why? So even though the king, let me, let me break it down. Even though the king is the most powerful one, he can command the people to do whatever he wants. He has this advantage, but the king stepped down to clean the floor, to, to clean his community with the people. He has the power. He has the authority to do that. But he himself came down from his throne, and then he started to clean the community. He is doing the general cleaning with his community. He is himself is leading, picking up rubbish and putting them in the dustbin. Even though he has the very power to do that, he did not do that. That's what Jesus did also here. So when Jesus came as a man, he is not coming as an atheist. He, don't, he wants you to follow God. So of course, when Jesus came, since he humbled himself, rather, listen carefully, verse number seven, rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. You hear that? So a God who is taking the nature of a servant. So he has made himself nothing because he is so he is more powerful than being a servant. But because of the love, because of the love, he made himself lower and took the human nature and made himself a servant. So when Jesus is speaking to the Father as a servant, as somebody who is worshiping, it doesn't mean he is not God. It is something he did to prove to you there is truly a God. Worship him. Even because he himself knows he will not stay here forever. He has a mission. And after the mission, he will be with the God. Who, who, um, which will prove that you are worshiping him at the same time. You see? 
So Jesus came as a man. And when he was a man, when he dwelled upon people, like the quote, um, verse is saying, chapter 14 is saying, he dwelled among us. Now he has taken the flesh of a human being. So the flesh of a human being, does it eat or not? Of course, it is. Human being, we eat. So when Jesus took the flesh of a human being, will he eat or will he not eat? He will eat. And that is nothing wrong because if God wants to eat, he will eat. <laughs> but the Muslims, you see now, so uh, uh, let me come back on the screen, okay? So it is not me putting some things in your brain, trying to manipulate you. I'm not trying to persuade, um, to trying to um, turn your mind anywhere. But you have to read the um you have to read the verses for your own. Your salvation is upon your hands, not upon somebody. It's not, it's not my duty. It is on your own hands. If you believe there is a after um, a judgment day, today to one most um, one guy called me, another guy, I will talk to him later. He called me, I wasn't able to pick his call, and then I called him back later. And then he said, Do you know what he said? Seto, I am a guy trying to join Islam, he is trying to convert because all his friends are Muslim. And I think they are trying to convince him to join Islam. And the guy called me, like yesterday too, I played an audio for you, which another guy too in Ghana, who called me. And then he is saying, to, I want to ask you some questions about Islam because he is also trying to, he is thinking of joining, uh, uh, becoming a Muslim. So uh, it is okay, you can call me. And that is a very reasonable thing to do. If you want to follow certain things, if you want to go and buy a new iPhone, okay? If you want to go and buy a new phone, me too, I am trying to buy myself a new phone. I am always trying to compare the prices, okay? What what, what would I get from this phone? Okay, the, the newest phone is on the market right now, Samsung Galaxy S22, which is my, 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 my uh, you see, this is what I want. <laughs> I need time. So if something Galaxy S22, plus or ultra or whatever it is there okay hey my guy if you know somebody connection you can connect it to our accept it okay you're steady so if that is the phone that i want to have what will i get from the phone now i have to try and check okay if i buy this phone what do i get from this and analyze it for my own for myself so if you want to buy i, I won't go to samsung if you go to samsung samsung will, will, will convince you will let you know oh this is the best phone you will ever ever have so you, you you see Samsung will not gonna tell you that oh there is some fault here. This here it is it is a little bit pro problematic, or here Samsung will not tell you this. So you have to go and listen to some people who are not um marketing for Samsung so that you will get maybe a different perspective. Oh, you buy in the phone, the, there is a problem here, and then you will know before you buy the phone, and at least you already knew before you bought it. So these people who want to join Islam, okay, you can just Contact me. The telephone number is there. I am not going to tell you don't join Islam. That is not my... That is, But I am going to give you an idea of Islam that you will not hear from the Muslim. And then you can make your decision. <laughs> that is simple. So this brother who called me today, I called him back. But unfortunately, the time that I called him back, he was also busy. He said, Seto, I am busy right now. I cannot speak. But this is my problem. Uh, I'm trying to, um, I was about to join Islam or some, his friends, all his friends are Muslims. Some people, that is it. Because of friendship, okay, you, they join their religion. Because of um, um, community, everybody is doing this, so they also go and do the same thing. That is, that is something some people do. But this is not a game. It is about your salvation. You see, <laughs> let's say you, fi you find something good in islam which you like for example the way the women dress not all some women dress okay you like to cover up it is in christianity too they stole it from christianity just because the christians don't practice it doesn't mean it is all dressing modesty is in christianity the verses are in the bible already okay in islam too they have a different there is a different reason why they dress modesty there is a different reason the reason was because so that the men will Men will not harass the women. You, can you believe this? So the Muslim men were harassing women so that the women have to cover up so that the men will not harass them. <laughs> okay. So if you find something in a religion which you prefer, which you like, you don't have to join the religion first. Look at me. If I see, if okay, let's say Ramadan is coming very soon. I think maybe like 50 days more or something like this. Ramadan is coming very soon. 
and you think fasting is a good thing, you, you want to do fasting, why do you have to become a Muslim first? You can just fast. You can use, okay, Ramadan has come, uh, the Muslims are fasting, and you also, you think fasting is good for you, you want to fast, okay, which is, which is not bad. Fasting is not bad thing, but for one, 30 days fasting or one month fasting, no doctor, um, uh, no, no doctor will encourage you to do 30 days fasting. But as we all know, the Muslim is not even fasting. This is not fasting. You see, you, you, you just stop eating the daytime and you eat at the night time. And then when it's Ramadan is gone, you eat at the daytime and you don't eat at the night time. So you just switch up. You, you switch. <laughs> you just switch it. Daytime you will eat. You won't eat and you eat at night. And then when Ramadan is done, you won't, you won't eat at night. You will sleep and then you eat at daytime. So it's the same, okay? But if, if you want to fast, you say one week fasting, which is good, okay? You it, it is it is. You see, I did it. I did one. I did it before, not um, fasting for three days. I, I I think I I even I made it for three days. I, I was able to do it for three days. It was very good for my body for three days. Only water. It's try to drink only water. Water fasting for three days. It was very good. You see. So if you want to fast, you can fast. Why do you have to become a Muslim first before you fast? It's not if you if you if you think uh, the the dressing code, the dress code, you like this dress code, get dressed like that. You don't have to become a Muslim first. If you find something good in the Bible you want to use, you can use it. Nobody is forcing you. Just don't you see if you are not a Muslim, don't go out because you dress a certain way. Some people will think you are a Muslim. You can you know I am not a Muslim, but nobody can force you not to dress a way you want to dress. You can dress the way you want to dress, and then you go around. You go simple, so you don't have to become a Muslim. So this brother, the, he's in Ghana too, okay? Because his friends are Muslims, and then he is thinking about becoming a Muslim, and then he's now he called me. He wants to know, and I will talk with him, and maybe tomorrow or the next day, or I don't know when. But whenever I get a hold of him, we will speak, and then whatever questions he asks me, as usual, I will record it and I will play it for you. I already played one yesterday from another most, another guy who was thinking of becoming a Muslim. And then he was asking me questions about like, and when I become a Muslim, do I have to change my name? Do I have to get a new name? And then I, I gave him an answer in the video. You can watch that video too. It's on YouTube on, right now that I'm speaking, okay? So um, thank you, Milan Lion is also, has also joined us. Thank you, Milan Lion, okay? Kindly share, invite people. We are not here to attack Muslims, as I always say, but we question the same way Muslims question other religions too. The same way Muslims question other religions, that is our duty to also question Islam too. That is nothing wrong with it. We question Christianity too. But I don't want to be twisting certain things. Just because I am reading for you what is in the Bible and I am saying it according to what the Bible is saying, doesn't mean I believe in the Bible. But I am just saying what the Bible is saying. It will be a, it won't be sincere. It won't be an honest for me. If I know the Bible is saying this and I'm trying to twist it to deceive people, that will be easy. That will be this. Nice. That will not be an honest thing to do. Even maybe you don't like the idea that Jesus is God. That is not me trying to put something in your brain, but that is what the Bible is saying. Okay. You don't like the idea, but that's what the Bible is saying. And if the Bible is not saying that, you call and then you what? You educate us. That is simple. <laughs> Somebody, David says, so Sato, you scared the whole Islamic scholar away. Please, that's shake. Uh, <laughs> you see, because they have been always, um, they have the, uh, they come out claiming they know best. They know best. Somebody is calling. Okay, let's let me see. Maybe he's um, watching us live. Hello. Hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Too. Yeah, evening. Who is speaking? Where are you speaking from? Yeah, this is uh, David Kambu calling from Nigeria. Ah, okay, David Kambu. I see you are watching. You are live right now, right? You are watching us. Yeah, I just want to add to uh what you are trying to say about the the trinity about the way the sheikh explained that since god has hands, we should not think the way human beings have hands mm -hmm. so likewise when we are talking about the trinity he says god cannot have a wife or 
cannot have a girlfriend, so he cannot have a, a child. He's also thinking like we human beings. Of course. You see, he's thinking like we human beings. So he should also think that the way God has a child, we don't expect God to have a child. The way we human beings are having a child. Mm. So he too should not think like that. And also, like I'm giving like the Trinity. We're talking about the like I gave one example about egg. Egg yes. is one. In that egg, when you remove one particle, you see the shell, you see the egg shell, which you see the egg uh, argument, and you see the yolk. You cannot say there are three eggs. Mm. You can also say you and all of them they have egg on them. You can say, okay, this is egg shell or she, egg shell, this is egg argument, and this is egg yolk. Are they three eggs? They are not three eggs, they are just one. So I don't know how when it comes to them, when they say God has the mouth out, they will tell you, no, you don't have to think like human being. But when it comes to Christianity or any other book, they will explain it the way you said it. Whatever you are trying to tell them, they don't care. So and one thing is that we thank God that now, you know, in those days, people don't they, the Quran were not explained in English. That is why mm. so many people don't have any question to ask them. But we thank God today. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Quran that were explained in English that we read it and we ask them questions. They can mm. wish they don't even know. They don't even. And each time you ask them a question, if they don't have the answer, the best thing they do is just to abuse you. It's true. It's true. Yeah, just like somebody was saying, we we're talking about. He said the best guidance is from Allah. That whenever God guided you, to a Muslim. He said, whenever God you, God guided you, you don't go astray. I said, okay, good one. So you say, well, whoever God guided, never go astray. He say yes. Are you sure? He say yes. Then since if God guided somebody and that person will never go astray, why would God say, if you are leaving Islam, you are to be killed? Mm. This is somebody he guided, and the person accepted Islam as his guidance, and the God says, you will never go astray. And then the same God says, if you are leaving, you are to, you are to be killed. The person told me what the best I should get out that I don't know anything that is I'm 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 <laughs> calm, I'm this and that. You understand me? But well, I thank God if uh, Seto, you are doing a very good work. Thank, thank you. That's what I just want to say. You, thank you, Gambo. Thank you. Okay. Share share the program for us. Okay. Invite Nigerian brothers to. And this is the verse that he's saying. Gambo made a very good point. Okay. So if if we cannot, um, according to the Sheikh, you cannot imagine how God is, how and you cannot imagine. So how come your God is telling us that uh, he is the originator of the heaven and the earth? How can he have a child when he have for him no consort, which is no woman, no wife, no girlfriend? So he has, for God, according to the logic of Allah, not according to me, that is the statement, okay? For him to have a child, he needs a woman. And he don't have a woman, according to that means uh, he is thinking like a, a, a man. Can you believe this? And and then Mary also had Mary was able to conceive a child without the man. So you see the God of Mary, because the Quran is reporting Mary's time, and the God of Mary was able to do so. But in the Quran, that Allah in the Quran is saying, How can I have a child when I don't have a wife? When I don't have a consort. Okay, so you see the difference here. And one somebody is also saying, somebody is calling, okay. Somebody is also saying, says Seto is funny that Allah, you see this majestic we, the, the, the reason why the Muslim, they use it majestic we, we don't even know, because the majestic we didn't exist 1,400 years ago, it, didn't, it wasn't there, they never used, you can do research and see when we started using something called the majestic we, and when, the, when they say the Quran is for mankind, please try and find, search for when was the first time they translated the first Quran. When was that? You see, when was the first time they translated the first Quran so that we will know the Quran is for mankind? People will understand. That's why Gambo was saying before. Now that they have translated the Quran into languages that people can read and understand, they are feeling the heat because now we can analyze the Quran. Hello? Yeah, Satu. Yeah, Bema, who is speaking? Samuel, yeah. Sami? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, me amini, me ni amini, me ni selasi, selasi lumu. Me na me sene message sisi ano. Now, okay, can you speak in English? Eh. Uh, 
Sure, 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 sure. Why nah, not? Okay, so we are listening. Yeah, I have a little contribution uh, concerning the topic you are treating. Okay, we are listening. Yeah, I want to clarify the Trinity and I want to break it down a little bit for our other party who, do, who doesn't really understand it and they think that it doesn't doesn't make sense. So I want to I want to narrow it a little bit to someone a, a rich man who has a company who has established a company and he has employed workers and all the workers he has given authority to accordingly. Mm. But he has a son. He has a son who he has willed everything into the hands of the son. Mm. You understand? So even though the people in the company, they have authority, he has given them posts and other stuff, the son has the same equal right as the father. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if if the son if the son comes to the work side. Hello. Is the is the is the manager of the company and the father is the CEO. And the, the son comes there and see another worker, uh, uh, maybe reluctantly or exhibiting some kind of laziness and he's not comfortable with it. He has that same power of his father to fire that person. Mm. He has that same power to fire that person. And the son is the Jesus Christ that we are talking about. He has the same power of the father to fire that person and hire another person. Okay, let's talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the order that, that has been given at the company. That is the word of the owner of the company, the, support, the, 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 the boss of the company. So even whether he is there or is not there, because, so far as he has spoken the word that... Uh, if you come in the morning, you have to sweep your office before you start to work. That, he doesn't need to be there. But because he has given that, this word as an authority, whether he's there or not, that word still stands. That is the Holy Spirit. Okay. So this, this is, I, I just want to narrow it to this so that they will understand it a little. Thank you. I don't, I don't know if I'm making sense. It's making sense. Yeah, you are making sense. And people God, are listening. And 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 and, and you uh, and 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 God coming down to earth to come and save mankind. As you are saying, like the king don't want to use his power. The king has the power to order the people to do whatever they want to do. But sometimes he has to come down to exhibit, give them the examples, show them how to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's take for instance, let's take for instance, our former president, Jerry John Rawlings. Mm -hmm. We know that as at, at his time, the seat of government was at the castle, Osu. And during his time, when there is a general cleaning in the community, Mm -hmm. This president, as a president of the nation, the whole nation, he comes and steps into the gutter. Not that they say, oh, not that the uh, hear say, oh, I was a I was Osu boy. Me, I'm an Osu boy. Mm -hmm. He will step into the gutter and start working with the military. So how, if he is doing it, how much more you, a common layman, mm -hmm. you stand and you say that you won't do it. So he tried to set example for the people. That's why in Osu com uh, 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 community or Osu Klote constituency, it is NDC stronghold. Because of Jerry, all the old ladies, he comes to the people, he play with the people and that is how he is. That is the, 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 the characteristics of this God that we are talking about. Coming down to earth to exhibit that kind of leadership uh, 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 model to his people. Mm. So this is my little contribution that I want to 
contribute to your and con uh, I, I commend you for the good work you are doing. Thank Keep you, it thank up. You, Sammy. Thank you. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are behind you and we are watching you. Thank you a lot. Okay. Uh, very nice. Uh, oh, sorry if I've cut him um, off. Okay. But it is clear. Okay. People understand what the guy said. Sami just said to. Just because the president, you see, the Muslims will say, how can he be a president when he is working in the gutter? How can you be a, <laughs> how can you be God if you are sleeping? Yeah. How can he be God if he cannot do something? That is the question. You see, for, for you, you are doubting. So the Muslims automatically doubt God. Or the Muslims automatically put a God or trying to decide for a God, what, how a God and how a God should be. Okay. So this is clear. Um, if you care about the truth and you are saying God is one and we cannot think about how God is, that is your understanding, then you shouldn't say, a God is one, and it's an example. Um, I think Gambo gave an example about the egg and the yolk, and the, the the you see the egg is also one egg, but you have different names in it. Whatever, everything in the egg has its own name. It is there's they're all separate, they're all different, but it's in one egg. We don't say three eggs because you have three layers in the egg. Okay, so there is something called compound unity. It is one. But there is multiple things. We have one family. You can be one family, but you are 17 people in that family. One man with four wives and all the children, they are one family. One, they use one. The word one is there. One, they are one family. Maybe like you, um, you and your wife, you have two children. You are one family, but you are not one person. You see the difference now? So you saying God is one. Doesn't mean anything. It, it, but the God in the Christianity that they say God is one, it makes you clear to read the Bible. You can see whatever the Father is doing. You see, there is the verse in the Bible: the Father will wake Jesus up, and Jesus said, "I wake myself up." So the Father wakes Jesus up. Jesus wakes himself. One God. They do the same thing. <laughs> Let me give you last verse, okay? So we can end the program here. Listen to this verse here, okay? According to the Bible, once again, not according to me. So Jesus came as a man, dwelt upon the people, and then he was doing example. So he himself is worshiping the Father. Why don't you want to worship the Father? That is the, you have to obey him. You have to follow him and believe that there is God. Because when he came, he gave the evidence. He, he, he gave you evidence that he's coming from God. He's waking the dead. He's healing the blind. He's healing the, those who are paralyzed. He is doing certain things which nobody did. What did Muhammad do? You Now you are following Muhammad, and Muhammad is saying his God will wake you up when you die. But where is your guarantee? Where is the proof? Jesus proved it to you. You see the difference? Jesus proved it according to the Bible. He did miracles for people to see, to, for people to testify, to witness. And that is the purpose of a miracle. We do miracles so that people could testify. We don't do miracle in a secret place where nobody can see. So what would be the purpose? So when Muhammad came, was Muhammad walking openly, doing miracles, performing miracles by the power of Allah? Let's say it like that, okay? By the power of Allah for people to see that Muhammad is also coming from Allah? A clear miracle, a clear sign. Muhammad, even there is a verse in the Quran when the blind man came to Muhammad and Muhammad frowned his face. And then now Allah is coming to warn Muhammad or coming to uh, rebuke Muhammad. Don't, like, don't do that. When the blind man came to Jesus, Jesus opened the eyes. <laughs> so which one do you want to follow? Think about it, okay? And Jesus knew that he was not going to be here forever. So he wants you to follow the Father. Because if you worship the Father, you are worshiping him at the end of the day. And listen carefully. Those who say Jesus never said he was God. Who... To whom do you pray to? Do you pray to a messenger or do you pray to God? Jesus is speaking with you according to the Bible, not according to me. And I will do whatever. Listen carefully. I will, I, who is, who is speaking here? Jesus is speaking. I, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. In my name. So Jesus is telling the people, if you pray to me, I will do, not I will do. And whatever Jesus is doing, the Father is also doing. But there is still one God. That is what you have to understand. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. 
the Holy Spirit is not the Father, the Holy Spirit is not the Son. But they do the same things. But there is one God. And Jesus is letting you know, and I will do, I will do, if he is not God, how, how can he say such a thing that he will do something for you? If you pray in his name, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Okay? Verse number 14. You, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. <laughs> do you hear that? So when you pray to Jesus, Jesus is telling you, you say Jesus said he, he was never God. When you ask him anything in his name, I will do it. For Jesus to be able to say that I will do it, that means he has to have the ability and power to do anything, everything. You ask him, he will do it. That is the that is the that is the that is what we call Almighty. So seven billion plus people we have here right now on this planet. If all of them are praying to Jesus, if Jesus is not God, how would he able to even know who is praying and where is he praying from and what is he asking and how is he going to answer him? Because he is God, he is able to do so. And he is telling you in the Bible, this is not like, you see, the Bible uh, is it, it, a complete book. The Hadith is in the Bible. The Tafsil is in the Bible. The Asbabu Nuzul is in the Bible. And the word of God is in the Bible. So you have the book. You don't have to go and look for anywhere else. Like the Muslims are doing. They say they have the Quran. But when you put the Quran there, there is nothing there. You don't even know. <laughs> they don't even know. You see, when you go to the Quran, the Quran mentions Sabbath. Now, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm waiting. I will ask the Muslims next time. The Quran mentions Sabbath. Okay, let me see. I'm looking for this verse. The Quran mentions Sabbath. But the Sabbath, who is the Lord of the Sabbath? According to, who, according to the Bible, who is the Lord of the Sabbath? Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. But the Quran makes you clear that um, the Sabbath is, is, is from Allah. But when you come to the old, I think, I think it was Mark. I'm trying to look for this verse. I will put it on the screen so that people will understand. So this verse clearly says Jesus is what? Uh, Jesus is God because you can pray to him and he will answer your prayers, okay? I'm trying to search for this verse. Acts chapter 2, verse number 23. Hmm. Let me see. Okay. I'm trying to search for the verse. And then because I know it is in the Bible that Jesus is saying he is the Lord of the Sabbath. And then who 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 who, who made the Sabbath? So the verse is clearly saying. <laughs> I'm coming. Hmm. Okay, let me put it on the screen right here. Listen carefully. According to Mark chapter 2, verse number 23 going, Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Do you hear that? Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. That means the Sabbath belongs to Jesus. So who is Jesus if he is not God? Who brought the Lord, the Sabbath day? Who brought it? Is it who? Now you as a Muslim, the Quran is speaking about the Sabbath. Even in the Quran, the people broke the, the Sabbath. They didn't respect the Sabbath. And that was so um, bad for Allah that Allah cursed them to become monkeys. Okay? Because they didn't uh, um, respect the Sabbath and they went against the Sabbath, Allah cursed them and let them become monkeys. Now, Jesus is claiming he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Okay. Jesus is what he's saying. Be, um, I'm trying to find the verse in the Quran too. Quran chapter two, verse number sixty-five. Okay, let me put it on the screen again. Quran chapter two, verse number sixty-five. Okay, let me put it there so people will see what I mean. So according to the Quran, 
according to the, the program is about to end okay according to the quran indeed you knew those among you who transgressed in the matter of the sabbath i.e saturday you see the quran itself this one into bracket it doesn't it is in it's not in the arabic okay so ne my next debate if you are a muslim my next debate i want you to show me i'm not saying it's not in the quran but i haven't come across it we want to know where allah told the muslims the sabbath day is saturday i'm not saying it's not there please but we i want to know a verse where allah lets the muslim know or told the muslim the sabbath is speaking is referring to saturday because this one is the, just the interpreter has put in it there for you to know so because some people didn't respect the sabbath day listen carefully because they didn't respect the sabbath day allah said to them be you monkeys despised and rejected so allah cursed them to be monkeys do you hear that because they didn't respect the sabbath day allah cursed them to be monkeys and what did they do they went fishing they went fishing on the sabbath day so they didn't respect the sabbath day that was how serious allah took the sabbath day and then now let's see who is the lord of the sabbath day according to the bible mark chapter 2 verse number 23 but let's see what the 28 is saying you can read the whole verse okay you can read the whole verse then you understand it but jesus is saying in verse number 28 so the son of man is lord even of the sabbath do you hear that that is a statement from jesus you said jesus is not god jesus is saying he is the lord of sabbath even the sabbath belongs to him <laughs> think about it okay so the sabbath that was so serious for allah in the bible in the quran okay the quran which came even way after jesus and allah is claiming the sabbath belongs to him okay and then he people who disrespected the sabbath he turned them into monkeys now jesus said it before allah even came and brought the quran that he is the lord of the sabbath so who uh, can, is, is jesus god or not god then he said to them the sabbath was made for man not man for the sabbath do you hear that the sabbath was made for man not man for the sabbath because these people over there they respected the day more than human being but the day is actually there the sabbath is for man not man for the sabbath so the son of man which is jesus jesus is the son of man that is the title okay this title, you can find it in, in Dan, uh, Daniel. Daniel um, had a dream or re a revelation. And then he said this word, son of man. He saw a son of man in heaven. So he already, Jesus came and he, he, he is the only one who took this title upon himself. That's what the Bible is teaching. You don't have to like it, but that is what it is. So the son of man, which is Jesus, is the Lord even of the Sabbath. <laughs> he is giving you all this indication and you still say he's not God. That you see everything is clear. Why they believe Jesus is God? Not because he said, for you to say you are God doesn't make you God. Think, of, listen carefully. For somebody to claim he is God doesn't make him God. That is not the proof to be, say you are God. Oh, I'm God, so you are God. No. Had Jesus said what he's, had Jesus come out and say, I am God. That will make him God just because he said it. But the things that he's doing, the, the way, the things that he's doing, the power that he has, the nature that he has, he is still alive. He is the living God. According to Jesus is alive. Muhammad is dead. Jesus is coming back to judge you. He will be the judge. <laughs> According to the Bible, Muhammad is dead. Jesus is going to be the judge over everything. Jesus is the light of the world. Allah is also the light. As I, I showed you the other day, Allah is saying he is the light. Jesus is also the light. Look at this. According to John chapter 8, verse number 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Jesus is saying this before Allah said it 700 years later. And then Allah came to Quran chapter 24, verse number 35. Allah is the light. But Jesus said it first. Okay? So uh, I think uh, I've made my point clear here today. Seto SSK, kindly please share this video for me. You can download it and share it. 
tag people. You can copy the link and share it on your pages. Invite people. Um, let them let them listen. Force them to listen. People need to hear. Okay, I have like um, I have like I think maybe eight days or seven days to go. Then I can go back on Facebook. So then I will still be here. And even if I go on Facebook, I don't know. I can still be get blocked the next day. That is the thing I can't say. You see, we have to speak the truth, and sometimes speaking the truth will get you into trouble. So we have, and here it is a little bit um, safe, safe here. So we have people have to follow the page here too. I don't know why some people keep on asking. Say, so when are you coming back on Facebook? I can come back on Facebook, and then they will block me the next day because they don't. The, the agenda is not for you to spread the message. They want you to be quiet. Okay. So if you are new on the platform, subscribe on the YouTube page too. Because even if I come on Facebook next week, next two weeks, they can block me the following day. They can even block me the same day because of I will say something. They will say it is a hate speech. You can read the Quran. They say it's hate speech. Seto SSK, please. On YouTube, push the bell. Try to invite people. Tag Muslims, Christians. Whoever wants to learn, they can learn from us too. And then whoever wants to teach, they can come and teach us too. Okay? We are not here to entertain people just like that. Some people care about entertainment, but we don't. We want to educate people. Okay, It will be online for a very long time. So we have to um, uh, spread it so that it will reach all places. We want the message to reach places. So people will learn. Okay, uh, I will just end the conversation here. Uh, we have some few calls here, and I, I, I appreciate that. Okay, so... Uh, uh, Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. All of you who everyone who joined us, okay. Fati Oko, um uh, Fati. I, I subscribed, I have subscribed to your channel. I hope you have seen that. Uh, thank you also. Okay, you said I'm doing a great job. Thank you. Hey, is it the Quran chapter 24? Allah is copying Jesus. Yes, it is true. Because you can see clearly Jesus is saying he is the light. Okay, let's look at this. Jesus is saying, I am the light of the world. It says it clearly here. And then when you go back to John, okay, let me show it in John 2. It is there. I say, I, I don't know why people, John chapter 1, okay? John chapter 1, it says it also there. When they say the word became flesh, okay, let's go up small. You will see it right here. Um, He was with him and he, let's go. Through him, everything was made. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that was ha has been made. In him is life, in the word is life. And that life was the light of all mankind. Do you hear that? So in Jesus is the light of all mankind. According to John chapter 1, verse number 4. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So according to John chapter 1, verse number 4, it also indicates Jesus is the light of all mankind. And then the other in the um John chapter 8, verse num John chapter 8 also confirms it. You see, John chapter 8 also confirms it. <laughs> Seto SSK. Okay, I want my time um uh, to be exact as, as I planned. Okay, so I will end the conversation here for the meantime. Subscribe to my channels, YouTube and Facebook. I have been blocked on Facebook for coming live, but you can still subscribe there because I won't be blocked forever. You don't know. OK, but I will, I will be very careful when I come back on Facebook because I know that they want to shut me down. The Muslims, the, the, the Mushriks, they are reporting your page. So I will be very careful when I come there and then maybe I could stay there for a long time. But even if they block me, we still have the YouTube page. So you can also um, subscribe here and follow us and push the bell. OK, Mark Johnson, thank you, Fatih. Um, Okodoro, thank you. OK, and then um, uh, Amayo Ibrahim. That's it. Okay. Adaja, thank you too. Thank you for um, showing up here. Kweku A, thank you. Okay. Africa Abubakar, uh, thank you too. He said, um, you keep on lying that you are not attacking Muslim when you are doing exactly the same. You see now, but you give them opportunity to call. They will never call you to show you when you, where you are attacking Muslims. That's the difference. People can distinguish between questioning Islam and attacking Muslims. Okay. Africa, I'm not attacking anyone. You cannot even prove to me where I have attacked any Muslim. Me, when you come on my platform and then I am maybe at, uh, attacking a, somebody, a Muslim, I am not attacking him because he's a Muslim. I am attacking him because maybe he's a fool. 
he himself is a fool. It has nothing to do with Islam. I am not attacking him, say, because you are a Muslim, I am attacking you. It is because this particular person has attacked me personally, has insulted me personally, has attacked my family, has said something about my life, is it putting threat on my life. So I am attacking him too personally. It's not because he is a Muslim I am attacking him. But it's because he is a fool, maybe. You see? So it, it is not like I attack you. You, Africa, then you come here and you question me. I will not attack you because I am questioning Islam and you want to question me too. So why would I attack you? I mean, you are doing the same thing I'm doing. But when you come here and you start saying, I am a fool, I am a this, and you calling me names and you calling me names, and then I call you the same names back, you say, I am attacking Muslims. That is, you see, that is not logical. So I am not attacking Muslims. Muslims didn't write the Quran, okay? The Quran itself is saying, you can question it. The Quran said, if the book is not from Allah, you will find contradictions in it. So you, Allah wants you to ponder on the Quran. Let me show it to you. Maybe you don't know. Quran chapter 4, verse number 82, okay? Maybe you don't know. So let me show it to you. Questioning something doesn't mean attack. Okay? Allah is talking to all of us. Do they not? He's talking to me, actually. Do they not consider the Quran carefully? So Allah is telling me to consider the Quran carefully. To check the Quran. So that I will understand. Check the Quran carefully. And then when you check the Quran carefully, Allah is throwing the challenge. Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found therein much contradiction. So if the book would, is not from Allah, then we will find contradictions in the book. So now the Quran has given me the audacity, the authority to check the book, to ponder on the book. And me checking the book is not attacking any Muslim. Okay? Brother Africa. Thank you. Okay? So think about it. We are not... He says, you just want to blow and I understand. What, what do you mean? You see, everything that we said here right now, the brother wasn't able to answer one question, but he's saying, I want to blow. Blow what? I don't want to blow anything. We want to understand certain things, okay? The same way. So are you saying Zakanaik wants to blow? Or Zakanaik is telling the truth? When Zakanaik is doing that, he's telling the truth. Ahmed did that, the one who lied about Christianity the whole time. He was telling the truth. But when I am also questioning Islam, I want to blow. He said, bro, that is what you do. What do I do? Give me one example, calling some attacking Muslims. Give me one example. My time is up, but give me one example. I'm waiting. I was working. What does that mean? Okay, I, he was working. That, that was why he probably couldn't um, call. So maybe he will call next time, okay? But I, I, I want to understand or I know where I, I attack Muslims. This is the confusion. Muslims always say, when you are questioning Islam, they are attacking Muslims. When they are questioning Christianity, they are not attacking Christians. You see the logic here, double standard. When they are questioning Christianity, they are not attacking Christians. They are telling the truth. <laughs> but when they are questioning, when you question Islam, you are attacking Muslims. Double standard, okay? Let's end the conversation. Thank you all for coming here, okay? The truth stands, okay? The truth stands. Seto SSK, please kindly share this video for us. Invite people, tag people, and let's what um let's learn together okay the truth is one i'll end the conversation here thanks a lot and um see you um tomorrow or maybe the next day okay bye bye christians you know way and you say yeah candy did you him never shall i insult any of you but you know if you feel so bad in what i'm saying then you need to blame the bible because i'm quoting all the way from your bible <laughs> did you hear that just take um take the word bible out and put quran there if you are don't be angry with me i'm quoting straight from your quran okay